What is up guys? Welcome to the Pottery Studio. I'm John the Potter. Great to have you here. So today we have a video that I think is super, super important. We are talking about clay dust, silicosis, the air quality in your studio, how to minimize the risks. So there's a ton of different stuff to talk about. I just recently got this air quality meter so I can actually tell how many particles, like really small particles are in the air. It doesn't actually measure silica in the air, which is clay dust or glazed dust, uh, but it measures how many particulates are in the air. So that's been super interesting. Uh, so basically today I wanna talk a little about my initial findings, uh, what I've found in my studio, and then do some tests. So I'll mix up some glazes, I'll do a little bit of sanding and see what the results are because I know that what we do in the studio actually makes a difference in the air quality. So I got this idea, shout out to a guy on Instagram, Joe Thompson, his Instagram name is Old Forge Creations. He was the one that got this air quality meter and I was like, I didn't even know those things existed. Uh, so shout out to him. He has a great blog post all about this. If you wanna go read it, I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, because we're gonna talk about a lot of the same stuff. Read his blog post, and I don't wanna exactly replicate what he said, but his findings are very similar to what I have found as well. And this is something that has taken up, like over the past 10 years, it's probably been one of the things that's just like caused me this like minor anxiety at all times. I went through a period where I like was having chest pains and I was convinced that it was the clay dust in my studio that was like causing me silicosis and I went to the doctor and they had did like tests on my lungs and turned out everything was fine. Basically, silicosis is a disease, something that comes from inhaling a lot of small particles that cause scarring in the lungs. And it happens a lot in different types of industries like the clay industry or working with cement or grinding or dust, things where you're inhaling a lot. Um, it can cause cancer, it can cause issues. Uh, it is one of those diseases that it just gets worse and worse and worse over time. There's no cure for it. Uh, so that's why it's really important to make sure that you are doing everything you can if you're gonna be spending decades in the studio like I plan to, that you're making sure that you're taking the necessary precautions. And so this has been a great tool now because I can actually have like a peace of mind that I know, you know, if this is up at 40, 50, 60, uh, the PM 2.5, and I'm not gonna get super into the weeds, but basically, there's gonna be some particulates in the air at all given times. And normally when I come in the studio in the morning, this number is anywhere from 10 to 14. And that's kind of where the baseline is, is that's where even I have a filter that I'll talk about too. Um, and after that runs, then the particulars are pretty low, 10 to 15. Once we start working in here, if th things happen, one time I like had a apron that had a bunch of clay and I just kind of shook it near it and it spiked up to like 80 or 90. So that's when you know there's clay dust like going throughout the air. So a couple of my initial thoughts about this once we got the air quality filter. Keeping your studio clean makes a difference. Right before Christmas, we hadn't really cleaned or mopped the studio a ton and we had been working in here, me and my intern had been working in here um, and it was, going from like it sat at like 25 to 30, which is still below what they say is a dangerous range, but anytime you're above that baseline number of like the 10 to 15, then you know that that's something that you're doing in the studio that's putting dust in the air. So you wanna make sure that that's as low as possible. So once we got everything cleaned up, we mopped the studio really well, we cleaned all the surfaces, then no matter how long I work in here and what I'm doing, usually it would stay more near that baseline. It wouldn't go up to 25 to 30. So keeping your clean, studio clean matters. The other thing is how you clean. You should always be wet cleaning opposed to sweeping. Anytime you sweep, I did a test as well where I was swept uh, and it shot up to like 100 or 150 pretty quickly. So make sure you're keeping the sweeping to a minimum. Vacuuming, I tried the vacuuming thing where I va shot vac and it didn't really shoot up like I thought it would because you always hear that when you vacuum, if you don't have the right type of air filter in the vacuum, then you're gonna put clay dust in the air. I didn't really find that, but it's still best practice to you know wet mop and wet clean all the surfaces. A couple of the types of activities that cause clay dust to get in the air is definitely the mixing of glazes, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, so all the particulates are in here are super, super fine. Even like, I mean, I won't do this if I don't have a mask on, but even if I just shook this right here, I'm sure that this number would shoot up. 
uh, to a high number because you want to make sure whenever you're mixing glazes or working with anything dry that could get into the air, you want to be wearing an N95 mask. So this is a mask. Um, and I'll put a link to the air filter that I got and a, an N95 mask that I like in the description of this video. So anytime you're worried about clay dust in the air, wearing a mask always really helps too. So overall, my initial findings, I've been pretty happy with most of the time I work in the studio. That baseline number stays, you know, 10 to 15 range. That's just something that I've never known before. You know, I've worked in the studio for 10 to 12 years and I've never actually known, is there clay dust in the air right now? Like, am I creating clay dust? And so that's why this meter has been really fun. Not, I shouldn't say really fun. It's been very informative. All right, let's hop over to the glaze. Let's mix up some glazes, see if we can, uh, readings on there. I'm gonna put this on for the rest of the video so you know I'll stay safe. So we're about like four or five minutes and the air quality is still pretty bad. So I cranked up the air filter. Hopefully that'll bring it down a little bit. Okay, so the levels of the air stayed pretty elevated. Like I'm gonna turn this air filter down. So the levels in the air stayed pretty elevated for a good like 45 minutes to an hour. So I just actually left the studio uh, cause I didn't want to be in here while it was elevated. So I turned the air filter, the HEPA air filter on high and we're back down to like, it was just below 20, which is pretty normal. I would definitely recommend if you're going to be mixing up glazes to do it outside because turns out it does put out a lot of dust. Um, there's probably ways to minimize it a little bit, but I always do mix my glazes outside. I just did it inside for the purposes of this video to show you that it's not very good, not very good at all. And the other thing about when you create a lot of dust, like when you're mixing glazes, then you're putting it in the air and then eventually it either gets, if you have a filter, then it'll filter it out, but eventually it's just gonna settle on a surface. And then say you like go over and you just like wipe the surface, well then all those little particles go back up in the air. So that's why it's really important to keep your studio clean is because if there's dust or clay dust or glazed dust or whatever, silica, it's silica basically, uh, if it's laying on the surface and it's really fine particles, then it's gonna be really difficult to not like poof it up in the air at some point. Okay, so in conclusion, this is something that can be really nerve wracking for beginners. And I finally came to the conclusion that there are potters and people that work with clay all over the place. People have a variety of different cleaning schedules and you know, obviously I am not a clean person at all. I'd say I'm pretty far on the spectrum of being like less clean than most, uh, but the space that I had really made a difference. So when my studio used to be at Mocha Monkey, it was really difficult to clean. It wasn't easy to mop the floors at all. Like there was just, it just was an old basement with low ceilings and it was just hard to clean. So that's why I really made it a priority to build this studio make it easy to clean, the floors are perfectly flat, the mop's always accessible right there. Keeping a fairly clean studio, always cleaning wet, not dry, so don't sweep, don't vacuum, just clean with a mop and a wet uh, sponge. Anything that you think is creating dust, like mixing glazes, just do it outside. Or wear a mask, um, and then it, you just know that the particles can stay suspended for, like if you mix up glazes and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't see any dust anymore, well, likely there's uh, silica in the air that you can't see. So I'd say those three things are really important. I don't think a filter is totally, totally necessary. This uh, one is EnviroCleanse. They, I made a video a long time ago about this. They gave that to me and it actually works really well. I find that 
when you turn like when it when I turned it on and I left for an hour, I turned it on high and then I came back and the levels had come down a lot. So it does work. I wouldn't let it scare you out of this art and craft. Um, there were stories of one of a famous potter named Warren McKenzie. He ended up living until he was like 90 some years old. The stories were that he never had a clean studio, that his studio was full of clay dust. There's certainly things like things you can do to minimize the risk big time like mixing glazes. You saw that number shot up to like 400. I mean, that's a lot of silica in the air right then, but then it comes down pretty quick from there. So, okay, I hope this video helped. I hope it didn't scare you away from clay. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or things that I missed, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Uh, we got lots of videos coming, big ideas for 2022. If you have any ideas for videos, I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next video. Or our next resale, restock sale online is February 6th. If you want to check it out. Appreciate it very much. What? I toyed for you. You want a what? I toyed for you. You have something for me? Whoa. That's for you. What is it? It's daddy. Dad. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, bud. Thanks. Yeah. Yep. See you later. That was nice.